SGD. This will be an update link in the description to this. The Serapium Ancient Precision, therefore lost ancient civilization because couldn't achieve this uh, precision. These are the mainly granite, uh, well, granite, igneous hard rocks um, that these boxes are made of. They're one of the foundation stones of lost ancient high technology, lost civilization. It's, you know, the, yeah, you'll just see this everywhere. It just keeps going and going around. Uh, in that past video, we went through, and so the ones with the white X's were boxes that ha haven't been measured and no evidence of precision. In that link in that description, I go through each individual box, and even those are highly questionable, but no evidence presented, no no need to look those over. But the red ones can absolutely, definitively, and incontrovertibly be shown to be imprecise, including number 25, uh, the Ahmed Adley channel. You often see this recite. Uh, I went through his measurements. Uh, curious that this, you know, these engineers um, don't know how to use basic tools or understand the basic geometry of holding a ruler at a different angle is going to affect the measurement and then declare it. Anyway, that's in the de description. If, if not utter incompetence, uh, it is fraud uh, at worst, utter, utter incompetence and complete lack of basic engineering. And I'm not talking tertiary level education in engineering, I'm talking high school backyard type of stuff. However, 23, this is the important one, especially for the lost ancient high technology precisionists, therefore lost civilization. Uh, this is the evidence that they present. We must take Christopher Dunn's word for it. Uh, just on, on based on the reflections and other features, I was like, I was, look, it's, it's not flat. Uh, but what we have, and this is like with all the lost ancient high technology evidence, is a complete lack of evidence. It's a claim, and then, well, a photo like this, which tells us nothing even looked close. It seems that there's gaps there. Apparently, he's shown a torch through, and, and a gap would show up. This is the evidence that's presented. Uh, again, like he's, what the torch isn't shining underneath, it's to the side, even here. Well, that doesn't tell you anything. Uh, however, uh, and then we have um, Gregor Spori. He, again, he was covered in there. The, all the evidence for precision, you actually look at it and it's like, you know, bro, <laughs> what, what the hell are you doing? But, you know, we're, you know, just recreate the photo in the same box. We know it's box number 23 because we have this uh, graffiti there in the ceiling. Sarcophagus 23, is it a project as a great compilation? Now you can see it's the, the one that has the broken corner the stones are piled on up on the inside. It's unique, unquestionable uh, that this is another one. So, ah, oh, but now this is another box and the one that Chris Dunn measured, no, no. Uh, so there we can see the blocks inside. There's Christopher Dunn. You can see the break, obviously, which is the same here. That's the box, no doubt. He doesn't tell us in his, you know, evidence which ones he is in, but we can, well, have to scooby do it a little bit and do some digging. And uh, so then again, that Gregor Spory one, box 23, zoom in, we have this stone. Keep on, I'll bring that up later, but, well, okay, that's going to be the kicker. Uh, in Chris Dunn's book, but even prior to that, you'll find um, Galal, Galal Ali Hassan, Mechanical en Engineering in Ancient Egypt. He references Christopher Dunn, who engineered Christopher Dunn, wrote the following, he had a paper published, and uh, the, the problem is with papers and well, things like this is that it's assumed that the person presenting the paper is a virtuous, honest person. We, you know, when they take measurements, you know, present a, a, a spreadsheet of data, that type of stuff, well, it's assumed that, you know, that they're rigorous, honest people. And so... These get you know referenced again and again, and then it embeds itself in in the consciousness of being true. And so the claims that Chris Dunn makes uh, surface was exactly flat as measured by my precision straight edge to an accuracy of 0 0.005 millimeters. All corners of the base are filleted. The inside surfaces are flat, 
vertically and horizontally. The surfaces are square and parallel to each other. That's a that definitive technical claim there that even the uh, high school physics, you know, there's no confusing this, especially someone as Christopher Dunn who claims to be master craftsman engineer. Inside surfaces of a high degree of accuracy compared to surface of plates in modern manufacturing facilities. Again, covered that earlier, uh, that's just no. You, you can't, that's not to be argued with. You can just look at the reflections and stuff. They are w leagues away from that level. High levels of technology were used by the ancient Egyptians. I covered it earlier, and then he like, yeah, goes to True Stone Corporation, who produces small granite plates, and says, uh, "Can you make a giant box for me to industrial, you know, to high le lab levels of precision?" And they said, "Well, no, we can't because we don't have the equipment because they don't make big boxes; they make little things that uh, sit on top of desks. But it's also we'll make one that's precision. Well, they're not precision. Okay, so is another point as well. But 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 uh, lost." Technologies of Ancient Egypt, so that's the one of Christopher Dunn's books. It's basically the Bible for lost ancient high technology. Was this is the basis that they all refer to? So back to Christopher Dunn's picture. He's in the box or coffer in niche twenty three. There we see uh, uh, that stone. Okay, now this is another picture, and we're in box twenty three, and so no doubt about it. We can see that's the same stone there. There's only one box that has stones piled up on the inside because 23 has that broken corner. We take it away. What do we have? Uh, well, now uh, you know, incoming. Oh, but Christopher Dunn's square was calibrated to you know uh, five nanometers or whatever it was. Well, big deal. Um, this one isn't. Builder squares such as these are built to end, you know, to a standard. You, you, you can't go to a hardware and find a builder square that's 85 degrees or 92 degrees. They're, they're very high standard. Not super calibrated like a lab one, but they're 90 degrees. And what do we see? Held in the corner. I mean, metaphorically, you could drive a truck through the gap between here and there. This is not nine degrees. It's not precise. That was a, you know all they're flat, vertical. They're all square to one another. Uh, firstly, and the only evidence he shows is looking at you know again far away low res. But that's the lid and the side of a wall. And uh, again, we've I mean I can sort of see the gap already there because it's so low res. You can't tell because this is how grifters work in low resolution claiming high resolution claims. So 23, absolutely not precise. Now it gets worse, uh, thanks to Alex Mott. Um, I actually saw these videos that he put up a few years ago where he was you know, going around the boxes um, and then couldn't, have, anyway, he got in contact, left a comment and uh, provided these. Uh, Kudos because he knows, you know, he can measure and he, and, he, and he can record evidence and he doesn't have to fudge it or fake results, unlike Christopher Dunn. Not just the Serapium, uh, he also faked, hoaxed, frauded uh, one of his experiments in his books with the drill as well. I'll put that link in. I've covered this uh, Christopher Dunn guy. He, he is an absolute the most incompetent craftsman engineer in the history of the world or an absolute fraud. I don't know which one would be better suited, uh, which one he would prefer, but either way, everything he touches is crud. So that's 23. That's where Christopher Dunn was standing. We can tell by the crack, the break in the wall, and a, and a nice low res picture, and you know the torch not shining directly underneath, but you know from above, doesn't tell us anything. And where did this one come from? Well, because we saw that earlier picture, we can see where that broken uh, piece is there. So, exact flatness, absolutely no, not even remotely close. Uh, not a nice polish at best, but the ripples in the reflections absolutely gives that away. 
no need to even measure, <laughs> in, uh, and that the surfaces are square and parallel to each other. Absolutely not. Christopher Dunn is standing on that spot. So he's making these claims that all the surfaces are, squ are squares. Now, it could be excused if he walked in, put it up there on the corner and said, oh, well, all the other ones are there, okay. But him and, and the grifter lost ancient high technology community are very explicit about their claims about this and therefore lost civilization type of stuff. Uh, the most disturbing thing about this is that Christopher Dunn was shown these pictures on a Facebook chat uh, some time ago. He knows about this. He responded and said, oh, this is great information. And then he never returned, disappeared, went silent, crickets, and then he re-emerged to tell the same lies again, knowing that they're untrue, covering up the information. This is another uh, propagandist trick. Let's to, to paraphrase uh, her, her Goebbels, do what, what you accuse the opposition of doing. So the standard, you know, um, Lost high tech, lost civilization. We're being suppressed. Why won't anyone talk about this? We're, we're being suppressed. Actually, they're the ones suppressing the information. If you try and be polite and share information, you get shadow banned, blocked, deleted. Um, they then they request an experiment. You do the experiment and then they ignore it and refuse to even share. So then they, they may be in an offhand. Start, oh, these experiments, they, don't re, they haven't achieved the results. Well, if actually showed the results in the experiments, they could give it to their audience to be the judge of that rather than just declare it and not cover it because these guys are grifters, frauds and cover-ups. And the very thing that they... The victim mentality that they claim to have is a fake one because they're, they're the ones guilty of what they claim is being done against them. If it was a mistake before or an oversight, that's one thing. But again, just like with these fellas, um, even when when what is required of the, you know, sceptics is pre presented to them and they know it and then they cover it up and then they'll go on another podcast and, and launch another uh, tour, do this, that, you know, to keep the, the money stream coming in. An error becomes a lie when you refuse to correct it and when you lie for money, that's fraud. All right, so the straight edge and lied um, test Again, written down and like I'm an engineer and all these, you know, in the comments sections, oh, I'm an engineer and I've been working metrology lab for 30 years and that's how I do it. Uh, yeah, but sources do trust me. Well, um, square in the corner. Okay, it's not the best, but let's look. Scientists Against Smith, the Azita Project, and especially the Azita Project is a, it's, you know, alternative, let's call it, but they're very diligent and they're very honest and they do, you know, uh, there are, in all, there's always a, a con artist, there's always a fraud, there's always someone who's seeking to cheat. It's, it, bad behaviour is not a matter of, you know, what particular group you belong to, generally. Uh, so, but it's, yeah, okay, it's absolutely busted, but not only that, Grifter for Dunn knows this, and he sells the grift on podcast after he knows it to be correct he's covering these things up um this little mafia of grifters the lost ancient high tech community they always support each other or uh and the apparent truth seekers but not even you know, this should ab absolutely be called out and the lost high tech community needs to disavow this fraud this con this hack and um, or, or maybe he could explain <laughs> maybe they could explain why they you know maybe like a, they had a memory lapse when they asked for these things and then accidentally they just sort of hit the censorship buttons to uh, cover this all up so maybe that, maybe they can weasel their way out of that with some sort of excuse but uh, yeah it is absolutely cringe I mean the dude is standing there and he's made the claim that all the corners are parallel flat square literally standing there 
So grifter for done, absolute grifter, uh, congenital liar as far as I'm concerned, uh, because again we all make mistakes. But his book, especially the lost technology, is a, a textbook in incompetence, or a textbook in how to lie and sell a mystery and uh, grift people, evil. But given the fact that they censor so much, I'm quite certain. Um, which which one? Look, hopefully they might just be incompetent, uh, totally useless in the area that they you know, claim to have worked in. But well, I don't know. You know, it's hard, it's hard not to you know to to be charitable in that and not just see that they're just lying their asses off, and it's their career, it's their business, and yeah, it just, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse for this fella. Have a good one.